Charlie Cushane here to do another truck camper mod. In this mod, we're going to take a look at valances that have been in a truck camper for many years and the owners want to update it. So let's go take a look at what they have. We have a 16 year old camper and the valances are looking kind of dated. Plus, I just painted the walls yellow and I really wanted something that would go better with it. So um, this is the before, what we had in the original uh, valances, and this is an after. And today we're gonna take you through and look at how to take a valance that's older and recover it. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is re remove the Venetian blinds because I can't get the valance off without it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Perfect. Okay. Okay, here's the um, original balance to the camper and there's this swooshy thing on here. And I don't really want to keep this on and even if I did, I would need to remove it to do the, um, the project. So to get it off, our camper company has used Phillips screws and I need to remove them with a drill. Now, on the sides, this is uh, what Jenny was talking about with the tools, there are lots of staples. So we're going to have to take uh, the screwdriver and kind of push them up and then use the pliers if they won't go after that. Okay, here they are taking the staples out from each end. Okay, one thing we learned from the first one we did uh, was to take photographs as we go uh, before we rip everything apart, before we start um, before we start manipulating this at all. So I'm going to take some photos with my um, camera. One thing that we decided upon when we um, started the project was that we would keep the original material here and actually use my material over top of it. Because it's 16 years old, we want to keep some of that foamy, it, that way it won't look so flat. So we're using this, we're actually going to do everything on top of this. Oops. Running into a little bit of resistance here. That's just an age thing. All right, now when you get to here, oh, this is something different. I don't know if the yellow's had a piece of cardboard. No, I don't. So, what you're seeing is this tack strip is being used, cardboard is being used like a tack strip, and it's holding down this piece. All right, we just got all the staples out. We can remove piece number one. <laughs> now, for the piping. Again, a ton of staples. So now we can just remove the piping. Wow, there was a lot of staples. Andrew's gonna cover the piping and I'm gonna take this and steam it. Okay, I've decided to make this roping uh, the same color gray as this on my fabric. Cut off the gray strip that I wanted. I just want this gray part, this darker gray. I don't want the lighter gray, so I have to kind of position it where only that dark gray is right where the roping um, shows. Okay, so right now I've only got about five pins in, but I wanted to kind of show you what I was doing here. I want this total gray part to be the only part that shows, so I kind of line up on the bottom side the lines, because on the other side I've got lines, so I only want that gray part, which is tough because the fabric will just move on you sometimes. Okay, so basically I've pinned the entire roping piece. I make sure they're very nice and close together because if not, the fabric will sometimes shift on me. Uh, so basically I'm done, and you can see the lines here, really nice and straight, and all of the gray. Wow, where came I out want great. It. So now that it's pinned, what do you do to keep it in place? Uh, well, we'll take the pins out and sew it on the sewing machine. And the uh, foam underneath has been compressed by that swoosh. So I'm going to steam the folded areas of where it's depressed 
and try to bring back that foam underneath. You're trying to fluff it up. Fluff it up. Okay, steam it. As you can see, that V is completely gone and the surface is all fluffed up. So now it's ready to be recovered. So with any fabric, you need to uh, iron it before you start messing with it. You can see there's folds from what was on the roll and creases and all manners of mishap as well. There's right here, there's a... Heavy crease right there. Yeah, heavy crease. All right. How are you going to get rid of those? We're going to steam it. This is a heavy duty cotton. I'm just going to go over it with the iron to give it a final press and help dry out some of the steam so when we go to use it, we're not dealing with what hot fabric. Now that the um, fabric is steamed and ironed, we're going to cut the amount we need for the balances. Uh, we already pre-measured, but I'll show you what we did. Uh, we basically measured around. So that says seven inches. We're going to cut seven and a half just in case. All right, we're using our rotary cutter. We've got to have a mat behind it. What's that rotary cutter looks like? Yes. Oh, it's just like a, it's like a roll, a wheel. A sharp wheel, okay? Yes. And then so this is instead of using scissors? Instead of using scissors, gives you a much neater cut. That's cool. We're going to sew this, and um, instead of using the regular foot, I'm going to be using the zipper foot so I can get right in tight. Um, this would be extremely hard to do if you were doing this by hand, because you'd really have to get in there tight. So a sewing machine is definitely a big plus. Since we're gonna fold this under, I'm not gonna bother back stitching. And I take this off. So you're taking the pins out as you go. Yeah, so take the pins out as you go. You don't wanna break a needle. You're trying to get as tight to the piping as possible. Yeah. So I'm actually pushing this towards the piping. And here she is. She's done the whole length and she's getting to the very end. Yeah. And it really helps having all of these pins in there. The more pins, the less likely the fabric is to shift and the less likely we are to have to take it out. And just sew it out to the end. Perfect. All right, let's start stapling. This up, keep this tight, and yeah. Angela will get in there and start stapling. Creating the corner, making sure it's nice and square before they staple it. Okay. This is where all the finesse comes in, getting it perfect. All right. Now what we do is we go along the edge so we can make sure that this doesn't go crooked. If right. Because like this, we'll be in trouble. All right, they got the corner. You see it takes the two of them to hold it in place. Look how nice and neat that came out. Yeah. Perfect. We'll cut those threads. So now what, you have to do the other end? No, no we do the middle first. Oh, you do the middle first. Yeah, that way we can, um, that way we can get it tight to the other okay. end. Perfect. Jenny kind of holds it as I okay. put it, the staples in. Much more. Looks like there. you're doing a staple every three, four inches. Cutting off the excess. They left it a little long, so they didn't have to be too precise lining it up. Things in the way. Yeah, 
that's tight in there. Right here. Jenny, as, as I go along, she's kind of bringing oh, yeah, the, yeah. the fabric up. So yeah, that she's it keeping it tight and, and wrinkle-free. It does, doesn't pinch. The first time I went too fast and she was doing that, but it, it kind of pinched it. Let's see how that looks on the other side. Wow, that looks good so far. Yep. So the roping's now going on. I want to make sure that the staple gun gets very close to this roping, as, as close as it will go. Jenny's going to hold the roping so it doesn't move on me. And we're going to get it right on the edge of the uh, valance. So when it's in the camper, it'll look really nice. Nice. Yeah, okay. Looks great. Okay, so what we've done is we have the top piece that comes up and it wraps over. But we've got stripe to stripe. So they have to line up the stripes, yeah, top and bottom. The so stripes. they've done that. So that's what we've done. We've lined up the stripes and we finger pressed and then pressed with the iron the edge. right here so that we yep. roll it over to look nice and neat. See how much fabric is in there? All right. Okay. We're using the cardboard to get this a little bit tighter. Okay, we got the cardboard stapled in. Now we're going to replace the original fabric. Just give it a little more puff. Okay. And take this and just wrap it. Gently. Wrap it nice. And, and then you flip it over. Going. There you go. Perfect. I'm just going to staple this. Staple it. It's nice. Make sure staple it's tight. It All right. Here we go. Let's see. Turn it around. Show. Here we go. Wow, that looks great. Yay. Good job, you two. Now the last thing is you got to go install it. Yep. Look. Here we go. Here's Angela doing a little contortion thing. <laughs> Go in! All right, I'm helping Angela. There we go. One more. Here we go. You're in. In my plane. Here's Angela putting the, the Venetian blind. Oh, uh, there we go. Woo! I got it that time. <laughs> That's it. Go, um, go. Good. Good job. Beautiful. Okay. Now, let's see if we actually have it working. And. Oh, yeah. Voila. Beautiful. Good job. So let me ask you ladies, now that it's complete, how long did that valance actually take you to do? Um, About three hours? It took us three hours inside the house and then another half an hour here getting it up. So just so you tell everybody, this doesn't take 10 minutes. It actually, right. you have to dedicate several days to doing a whole camper. Right. We we spent all of last weekend and all of this weekend doing it. Yeah. And that includes can, Friday. You That's can Friday. see there's and a valence. Here's a valence. The other side they did. One a valance, valance there. And we haven't done that one yet. That. That's this big one. And then there's another big one here they did. So they've been working for many, many days. Oh, and there, there's one that, that needs to go up still. So, so, but it looks really nice. It's looking great. It and goes well with the yellow. I like yeah. it. This has been a worthwhile project making us learn some new things. And it's made our old camper look new and modern. I love it.
Great.